What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and I got done watching Jin vs. Ryu, which I did not react to unfortunately, because the song used during the fight may have been copyrighted, and I did not want to deal with that, so I apologize even though I said I was going to react to it, I was unable to. Now overall, I do think this was a very good episode. They treated both characters with tons of respect, the fight animation was incredible, and I enjoyed that song that was used in the battle very much. However, considering what they were including and allowing for each character, I disagree heavily. Now don't take this the wrong way, this is not an attack on the show, and I do not intend it to be so. Like I said, I enjoyed this episode very much. I just disagree with it. Now a lot of people are expecting me to be mad at this episode, and I'm really not. Again, it was good and I liked it, but also... The winner is Jin Kazuma. Well there you have it, the winner is Jin. Now before we discuss why I... Winner? Jin. Devil Jin is just on another level than Evil Ryu. Street Fighter in the past, and what they've shown for Ryu, there is no reason for Jin to be able to lose this. I think Jin will win, but I want Ryu. Meaning, I do believe that Jin is going to win this death battle. At all, so I think Jin's gonna win this. As you can see, the internet has pretty much decided they already know who actually wins. Jin Kazama. Whether it be researched, a simple prediction, or even fan voted, Jin ends up on top the vast majority of the time. And considering how many times this battle has been done, that is a lot. Now let's dig into what Death Battle said and why I disagree. We'll start off with the most significant and important moments first, which is why these clips will be out of order. Wait, Wiz, we forgot a feat. You remember that Gunjack robot? A later model of Jack once destroyed a meteor. Couldn't we just scale Jin to that? Well, it's unsupported by canon material, but even if we did, guess who destroyed an even bigger meteor? Akuma. Akuma. All right, so there's two points they make here. Akuma shattering a bigger meteor and that it's non-canon. Now, the non-canon thing doesn't matter. They included other Tekken Tag Tournament feats in the episode and even had a note that stated they were allowed and didn't contradict the main canon. They were very purposefully cherry-picking stuff here to give Ryu the advantage, and the Udon comics they used for Akuma's meteor is also non-canon and does contradict many story elements. But they said even if they did include it, Akuma shattered a much bigger meteor. The meteor that Jack shattered came out to 20 petatons, or multi-continent levels of power. That's hundreds of thousands of times stronger than they showed Ryu to be in this episode. Now Akuma's meteor feat does place him ever so slightly higher at moon level. But this is Shin Akuma that shattered the meteor, a new form of Akuma that completely curb stomps Ryu and is far above him. There's no way Ryu could possibly scale to this meteor feat even if it was included. However, in Jin's case, Characters far weaker than Jin are able to casually one-shot armies of these Jack-6 robots. So if both feats were included, Jin is the only one that would be able to scale to it, and it should have been included considering what else they've added from Tekken Tag Tournament. Well, Jin still takes the speed advantage with that flight into orbit, but it doesn't mean much when the difference of power and toughness is this massive. So we proved Jin leads in power, but now speed. Now they do say Jin did have the speed advantage, but they kinda jumbled it up a lot. They calculated the laser at sub-relativistic speeds, but then said it was only high hypersonic in the tag up there. And then they said the power difference was too great, even though the speed difference was much greater. Then they said Jin's movement speed was only at the escape velocity feet. Even though his movement speed should be equal to the sub-relativistic lasers as well, considering he scales to Heihachi, who outran one of them. This results in 13,412,332 miles per hour, over 4,400 times faster than the 3,000 mile per hour speeds they gave Ryu. Even if we kept Jin at those escape velocity speeds, he would still be at least 8 times faster, still enough to totally blitz Ryu with relative ease. Also, we know Ryu could maintain a much better level of control and discipline in Muno Ken than Jin in Devil Form. Yeah, hardcore Tekken fans know he had pretty good control over it in that Blood Vengeance movie, but it's pretty inconsistent with game canon. Even Tekken's creator has said it's not canon. Now half of this I do agree with. Yes, Tekken Blood Vengeance is non-canon, and by their rules of it contradicting the main canon, it shouldn't be included. But Jin has gained full control over the double gene in the main canon, just like Ryu with the power of nothingness. Jin is able to use most of his double gene's powers in his base format, 
at the end of Tekken 6, and the ending of Tekken 7 pretty much confirms he does have full control. And that's pretty much it for the results. Those were the big three points, and they really didn't talk about anything else. So now that those have been debunked or disproved or whatever term you want to use, let's get into a few extras. Now they did mention Jin's telekinesis, but they kind of tossed it aside because he doesn't use it in regular combat. Even though it would work no problem against Ryu as he has no resistance to telekinetic attacks. Then there's his ability to steal and absorb energy to use for himself, which they didn't mention at all. It's a huge thing! Jin could have absorbed the Satsui no Hado or the power of nothingness. Next, they did show the barrier Jin can create on screen, but didn't acknowledge it in the text box or in the narration. I don't know if they considered it at all during Jin's research, but it would add on to his victory considering it mimics Ryu's power of nothingness almost identically. And then finally, they also forgot to mention his healing factor. The devil gene brought him back from getting shot down right here, and it healed bullet wounds in his arm pretty quickly in his base form. So in addition to the stat leads I mentioned earlier, his control over the devil gene and all these powers that they missed and left out, hopefully I made a good enough case for why Jin actually wins this battle. But again, after all this, I want you to remember that I mean no disrespect to the team. I still enjoyed the episode very much. I love the presentation, how they presented both characters, the editing, the music, the fight scene, Wiz and Boomstick's jokes. I just don't agree with the research. But whether I agree, disagree, or heavily disagree, Death Battle will always be one of my favorite shows of all time. Not just on the internet, but in general. And hey, it's a versus debate, you're supposed to argue. So hopefully the Death Battle crew doesn't take this personally that I disagree. I mean no disrespect to the show or the people behind it. This was not meant to be a personal attack. So I'll leave this video with a fun fact. Since canon versus non-canon was a big deal in this episode, did you know that Evil Ryu is a completely non-canon character? He has never appeared once in the story canonically and is only there to represent a what-if scenario if Ryu gave in to the Satsui no Hado's power. Leopold the Brave, out.